Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another Versus Beers here on the Master of Hobbits Day, battling two beers that I got from Boutique in Bombay, courtesy of Inso from Boutique. Uh, actually, two are two almost similar lagers. So, in Germany, spe specifically like Franconia, Bavaria, southern Germany, uh, there is a very famous beer called Kellerbier. There is Schickelbier. There is Ungespundet Beer, uh, often, often called Ungespundet Lager Beer. Those three styles are very similar. Kellerbier is a often unfiltered, most of the time, it's older than the more modern lagers like Helles and, and Pils, are unfiltered, unpasteurized, and often a bit more hot. They also can vary in color from like really light to more amber. And this one we've got today is a bit more amber, but it's uh, one of my favorite types of lager actually. You get a little bit more character because the yeast is still in there and it's a bit more hoppy. It is very good. Then we have the Zwickel beer, which is similar to the Kettle beer, but a little, lower in strength and flavor, but it's the same concept. And actually it was the siphon that you used for taking out samples for measuring, it was called a Zwickelleuf, I think, that the brewmaster would use to take samples, and it's like that beer style has been named after that. And Ungespundet Lager beer is almost the same as well, but it, the big thing with it is that it's often uh, Ungespundet when it's fermented, meaning it's fermented without pressure. So the carbonation in these lagers are not as high. Uh, so you, and you also get a little bit more yeast character like in the cannabis because you don't have CO2 So when you fermenting fermenting beer it's often CO2 sits on top of the tank for like if you do a, a, a pressurized fermentation and When you do that the CO2 developing on top of the beer inhibits like production of esters for example uh, So it's not gonna be it's gonna be a more clean beer if you want to make like really clean lagers you need to ferment them partially at least under pressure to get it as clean and crisp as possible you get that natural co2 so that's like kind of the deal there's very similar types of beers they're often hoppy uh, but the ungespund can vary a bit more than um say the 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 zwickel and and Kela. but then i'm also a Kela beer that's been almost more like hazy helles so there's a a lot of variation in the styles but the beers for today is a special bottling of wilde rose Kela beer so this is one of the beer killers down in Bamberg. I've been there. I think I've actually, if you watch my Bamberg beer tour video, there's video of me possibly drinking this straight from one of the wooden casks down at the brewery or was it a wooden cask or was it steel? I think it actually was steel. Uh, but yeah, I was drinking down there and this is, or the brewery at the beer killer. So it's one of the beer killers. There's many beer killers around Bamberg where you can sit and enjoy beer on top of the, a, uh, is it sandstone or something like the like the killers are made of sand sandstone or it's something like that. And then on top you have like trees and everything and it's made into an area where people go drink beer and eat food and it's awesome. It's fantastic. If you've never been to Franconia and Bumback, that's one of the unique things you need to go check out. Have some food, have some pretzels and a meat platter, or have some whatever they're serving, some some sausage or something like that. Some sauerkraut. Uh, so it's really nice there. And uh, for their place, they have a specially brewed Keller beer by Bauerei Trunk. And they're based in Bad Staffelstein, where I don't know where that is, but they make the beer for them. The other contender, which is the Ungespunde beer, is from Spezial. So Spezial is also a bumper brewery, but Spezial is famous for making auch beer. But they do have one non-smoked beer, which is this, the Ungespunde Lager beer. So uh, yeah, and this also says it's a hoppy beer. So that's why I also thought it'd be fun to do a little battle on these two. Often these kind of unfiltered and, and whatnot styles, they don't last as long. I think, yeah, this looks unfiltered too, actually. So I guess, because often the Keller beers you find, uh, they say they're Ungespunde Lager beer, but they're actually Keller beers too, because they're fermented without pressure, like Ungespunde, but they're unfiltered, unpasteurized, and they're more hoppy. So it's it's kind of fun. And I mean, if I pour some of this in now, I think it will be a bit hazy. Yeah. There we go, a little bit. There's definitely more haze in the bottom of the bottle. Not too much there, but we'll see uh, later on. So I think, where should we start? So I think this one might be the least hoppy, just judging by the color. Or will this? I mean, I know this one. I've had, well, I've had both <laughs> several times. 
So but from memory, I can't remember which one I preferred. Usually I'd go lighter to darker beer. So let's do the lighter one. Because uh, the ABV is the same as 5%. So the Ungespunde Lager beer is a lightly hazy, golden yellow color. It looks fantastic. Spezial is also a great golf beer producer, but I do prefer Schlenkala. They, uh, they are my favorite producer of golf beer. But let's try out the aroma of this beautiful golden yellow and yeah, slightly hazy or just slightly, I don't even know if you want to call it hazy, unfiltered look with a white head. Let's check it out. Oh, really bready. Really, really bready. Almost like honey malt notes. Yeah, like a honey malt, sweet bready, uh, toasted bread kind of aroma. It says it's hoppy. There is a little bit of like this holzig, like woody hop. And also uh, I've heard some people say some hops are caramelly or at least like with traditional hops. And I can kind of see that in here. There's like that almost caramel touch, but it's not like what you expect from malt. It's kind of weird. Like it's not like a multi caramel thing. Yeah, it smells nice. It smells kind of like an unfiltered Helles. You can also see there's not a lot of carbonation, but let's try it. Cheers! And thanks to Bamberg, or thanks to Bamberg, thanks to Beautique and Bamberg and Enzo for the beers. Mmm. Haha! <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Schenkala's Helles. It has a little bit of a smoke character because they use the same equipment. Uh, and possibly yeast. It's very, it's even lighter than in the Schlenkerle though. Like, you'd have to look for it to find it. Very light carbonation. I think if you gave this to a Dane, they'd be like, what an undercarbonated lager. What's wrong? And they'd send it back. But that's how it's supposed to be. Like, also if you get, like, go to Bavaria or Franconia and you get, like, milk pour beers. They're like next to no carbonation, but that's how it is. Or slow pour in general as well. Mm. Soft, like it has like a little bit of a lager ester, like this soft, bright fruit ester, generic bright fruit, almost like pears and apples, which could be acetaldehyde, at least with the apple vibe. A really beautiful honey, like sweet honey malt and like doughy bready malt. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Hillis like. Um, a little bit peppery too on the aftertaste. It was really good actually. Really, really, really nice Ungespunden Lager beer. I do prefer, because it has like that slight hint of smoke character, I prefer the Hennis from Kankan a bit more. It's a bit more hoppy and a little has a little bit more layer of complexity. It's not too long ago I had it. Uh, but yeah, this is also still really nice. It's actually quite nice to have it with a fresher palate because whenever I'm in Bamberg, we with work, we have quite a few beers. And it's almost always like towards the end we get to, like if we stay at Special, we get to this, it's towards the end when we try all the other smoked beers. And then your palate's getting quite fatigued and it's like, oh, it's just a lager. It's nice, because it's a lager. But having it fresh with a fresh palate is nice. Mm. So let's move on to the Wilde Rose Keller beer by Trunk Brauerei. So I drank this at the beer kit, as I said, and I really enjoyed it there. So this is a slightly more amber colored lager and also slightly hazy, but as I can see, like with this one in the bottom of the bottle, that's even more hazy goodness or yeast, but it looks nice. Nice white head on this one as well. Looks like what you expect from like the amber can I be honest, you the aroma on this. Yeah, definitely more hoppy and it has a more caramelly malt profile. Yeah, much more hoppy uh, on the aroma. Uh, as I actually, I'm actually quite surprised by that because I remember this one is also being slightly more hoppy. It's like grassy and peppery. But it also has like this woody, holzig, woody hop character. Kräuter, spice, is what you say like when I say it's like spicy hop notes in German. Yeah, uh, actually surprisingly clean compared to this one. So sometimes keller beers, even though they're unfiltered, they are fermented under pressure. They can also not be. Uh, so it's a, sometimes a mishmash kind of style. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if it's fermented under pressure, but this has more of that interesting kind of lager ester profile, whatnot, which I've talked about before. Whereas this has less of that and it's maybe a bit more clean in aroma. But it also smells nice. Grassy and, as I said, like woody and a bit more malt substance to this, like that kind of caramel 
Till then, let's try, guys. Cheers. Much sweeter. Much sweeter. Yeah. Uh, I instantly prefer, like, just having a sip, no doubt in my mind, I prefer the uh, Spitzalungesbund. It has a bit more character and complexity, actually, when you drink it. This also is actually quite light on the carbonation, so it also definitely could be Ungesbund. But it has a bit more of a slightly buttery, caramelly, woody flavor, even more so than that one. That also has a bit of grass and citrus, but this is definitely like woody and caramelly and toffee. Like the best kind of list, like this more amber colored Kelabia, one of my favorites is the San Georgenboy Kelabia from uh, Buttenheim, which is very close to Bamberg too. That is phenomenal. And we get that fresh on, on, on keg locally imported by a local uh, English pub. It's really good. I think Brett and I have promised quite a few times to go and review it. I think it's called Buttenheim Kelabia. And we've talked about it a few times to go to the bar and actually review it there because it's great. Uh, it's a fantastic lager. This is in, in that ballpark, but it, it's lacking a bit of the layer of complexity and the hopping. But when we get that here, they import it straight from the brewery. It's really fresh when they get it. This one, both of these are not like super fresh bottles. In general, they don't, like these Kelabias don't have as long shelf life and I'm not giving as long shelf life because they're not pasteurized and they're unfiltered. But it's still a very nice Calabria, I think, for sure. Uh, but it's a, just a bit more malt driven. It's kind of like, almost like you did a Matson light, actually. Man, we've really been getting into lagers this year. It's crazy. 2020 has been the year of lager for me. I started getting into it really last year, maybe even longer ago than that. But I, I can't remember a year where I've reviewed this many lagers. We got more. We got more. We got some stuff from Warpigs. All of the their last release, almost all of it is lagers. But I think it's going to be in a live stream because there's a few hands. Uh, but yeah, I prefer the Ungespund from Spitzai. It's more bright. It's more singy. It's a bit more bitter. Yeah, it's a bit more grassy. It has that cool, slightly smoky note. Yeah, that's going to get the win winning marks for me, guys. That's very nice. I'm gonna go, yeah, like an 88, 89, maybe actually close to, maybe even a 90 to be honest. I'm actually really enjoying it. Even though I prefer like the bright grassy citric hop character in, in, in lagers. Whereas this is again, it's more that woody, peppery, spicy. It is good though. It is a pretty fantastic low, you know, carbonated lager, but let's jump in the middle and say 89. And for the Kerabia, an 85. It's also nice. Not as nice as the other one, but nice beer. So I really hope these styles are going to catch on to more people, more folks, more people are going to, you know, try and brew them. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's fantastic. I, I do love lagers. I, I don't know, I've just gone nuts with lagers lately. They're just so nice and easy to drink, and like the small, subtle layers and complexity, like the more you drink them, you more you start to notice it, notice it more, and you start to appreciate it more, which is awesome. So I really urge you guys to go out and check out some lagers. So that does it for this versus beers of the Spezial Ungespundet Lager Beer versus the uh, Wilde Rose Keller Beer and Spezial Ungespund 1. So thanks a ton to Biotech. Biotech, Biotech, and Enzo for these beers. You rule, dude. Thanks for hooking us up with great Franconian beer for the last, what, year or so? Maybe even more. And yeah, if you guys had a chance to check out either of these, let me know what you thought. Uh, if not, go to Bamba and drink some awesome Franconian lager beer. And uh, yeah, as always, don't forget to subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I almost like cheers. And see you guys in another beer review.